Oi oi. We're doing talking about the uh, the new Sex Pistols biography by Danny Boyle called Pistol. Go and look it up. Uh, Danny Boyle has been well. He's known for doing so many things: train spotting, Slumdog Millionaire, the the um, opening ceremony to the Olympics in 2012. God, it was ten years ago. But here we are looking at the life and times of the Sex Pistols. The dog's not asleep. She's just snoring loudly. Um, yeah, there was a bit of controversy before this because John Lydon tried to get it stopped because they never consulted him. It's based on the autobiography of Steve Jones called Lonely Boy, which was out a few years back. And, um, yeah, they didn't ever bother to consult with Lydon because, you know, he's a contrarian <laughs> and a bit difficult to deal with. Uh, and I went into this thinking, hmm, hmm. Now, it is, it is a, a rock biography. It is, um, it takes liberties. Indeed, it does take liberties. <laughs> so you've got to put that hat on. You've got, to, you've got to go in, you've got to be aware that some of the story and details might be just a little bit, you know. But what I want to say is the uh, the four actors who play the Pistols, or five actors, because, you know, they get rid of Matt Locke and replace him with Vicious. Toby Wallace, who plays Steve Jones. Anson Boone, who is just, he just gets Johnny Rotten. Uh, Jacob Slater is Paul Cook, who just might as well have been played by... Well, a deck chair, uh, <laughs> Christian Leagues, Glenn Matlock, and Louis Partridge, Sid Vicious. They make a fantastic pistols. There they are. There they are. Being the pistols. Um, yeah, so it starts off, it opens with him stealing for Bowie, which is something he supposedly had done. Again, liberties are taken here, and McLaren saves him from a life of crime. And he spends, him, spends the time. You know, hanging around the sex fashion shop, and that is how the band is put together by McLaren. Again, McLaren is the villain in this because he is always going to be the villain because he is a divisive character, um, part genius, part anarchist, part sociopath, part manipulator. Um, I find him fascinating as a person, and Thomas Brody Sangster. Who, who plays McLaren again gets his gets his mannerisms and his enunciations spot on. So again, one thing you do is look away <laughs> when not watching it, and it sounds like, especially when him and uh, Johnny Rotten are arguing together, it sounds like you know it may have happened. So that works. Um, there, but there are there are a few things again. I, I like bits of it, and there are bits of it that deeply, deeply irritate me. The look of it, for a start. Um, because they use a lot of archival um, clips, they kind of tried to, again, they kept it to the 4x3 TV format. You go, why? That's just irritating. And I think that really kind of constricts the whole story. I think it needs to be shown. It is, you know, The Pistols are a widescreen story, goddammit. But I think they've done that to match a lot of the... Um, archival material that they use and they use a lot of it and they also recreate archival material which is strange so they might be talking about a performance of the pistols instead of using the actual perf you know the actual performance they'll redo the using um the the pist the fake pistols <laughs> so yeah there's a lot of um a lot of playing around with imagery in it um but yeah the look of it it looks kind of cheap and it looks like a TV movie. It looks like one of those, it reminded me some of the look of it of, you know, those TV movies you used to get on VH1. You know, like the one with Def Leppard and that. And, and that's a shame because you know Danny Boyle is a he's he's a visionary. I think that cheapens the experience. Also, some of the editorial choices he makes, like he has a peculiar fascination for doing this weird matrix matrixy kind of bullet time juddery stuff whenever there's a moment of action and it's just getting irritating. Irritating. Um again it he does he, there's a number of shots in it which you just go, why would you do that? You know, also there's a 
the, the, there's a bloom. There's like a, an over uh, overexposed bloom on some of the shots, which is just ugh, it, ugh. I don't know. They should have just shot it in black and white. Um, so yeah, the, the visuals of it I found thoroughly irritating. Um, but this is kind of offset by the compelling performances of the of the four or five main actors. Again, Paul Cook gets a bit of a short straw on this. He doesn't really get much to do in it. The, the, uh, Jacob Slate replaced Paul Cook. His character is just kind of resigned to being like a background um, figure, even though he's there. Um, and prominence is given to uh, Chrissy Hind, who's played by Sidney Chandler. I know Chrissy Hind worked, you know, in the sex uh, boutique and you know hang, hung, hung around with Nick Kent. She worked with on Enemy and everything, but she's really this place. There's a big prominence with her relationship with uh, Paul Cook, is you know pretty prominent in this, and you think again. I think it's just done to stop it from being a very male production and also to extend it to six episodes. Again, another criticism is a lot of these miniseries just stretch the story out. You've got to remember this band, they existed for like two years and then imploded. And the stuff that they should have concentrated on, like spoilers, Sid Vicious murder of Nancy Spungen, you know, whether he did it or not, again, wasn't really debated. And his suicide is literally done in, in, a, in two minutes. You're just like, what? You know, and lots of things happened in the interim there, and there's a lot of debate on what really happened, and that's not really examined, and that's a great shame. Um, again, some of the some of the plot points are orchestrated to add drama to it. Some of the recreations are really good, though. Some of the concert bits that they do, are, you know, just look really shonky. But then when they do the the like the when they do the American concert bits, it's full of people and there's there's a real vibrancy and a real energy to it that's lacking in the in the London, you know, concert recreations. So you know, there's not that, and you don't get that thick layer of fog of smoke that you got in the 1970s. Um, that's sadly lacking. There's one interesting part um, when um, this, again it's a real throwaway scene set in the sex, sex boutique and McLaren wants to make holes in the walls and the, the expert, you know, the, the builder he's got in he goes, oh no gov, there's asbestos up there, you, you mustn't disturb it and then you see McLaren make holes in the in the ceiling with a broom I think it's a broom and I went, oh I actually paused it and said to me this is interesting because McLaren died of an asbestos related cancer and it was just a really strange little thing just to include you know into the into the thing it's like a little kind of well not easter egg but i thought it was an interesting um uh, just an interesting point to put in you know so there's there's little little details you know and there's other bits that i felt again i was kind of okay let's get to the nitty gritty should you watch it yes i think you should even though it's irritating you should watch it because yeah, Maisie Williams gets her tits out. <laughs> it's funny because like Susie Sue's in it, you know, but she's not really given much screen time at all. And she's like a really you know big iconic mover in that movement, and she's just a background again a background artist. They put a lot of emphasis on Chrissy Hind, which I thought was a little bit odd. Um, the recreation of the the Grundy. Incident again is a little bit of little bit of playfulness there. Uh, the great actor Kevin Eldon plays Grundy, and they they play around with that. Um, more irritating things is like the end when it, the very last gig that they do, and instead of them recreating the incendiary implosion of the band, they end up cut it with Malcolm McLaren covering the um, the Max Bygraves "You Need Hands" song. And it just goes, why are, you, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? But it does end brilliantly. There's a lovely ending. I really enjoy the ending. You know, they it's really cool. And again, I think um, John Lydon, Johnny Rotten, comes out of it really good because, again, he's a person that believes in the truth and being honest and 
you know gets exasperated by the the Machiavellian shenanigans of McLaren and you can sense again Anson Boone just does a really good you sense his exasperation <laughs> you know and there, there like I said there's some really good scenes standout scenes in it like with the conf confrontation against the the stepfather uh, Paul uh, Steve Jones's uh, stepfather uh, is a great scene there's lots of really good scenes in it but over padded a little bit wonky but then you've got the the that core performance from from uh, Toby Wallace, Anson Boone, Jacob Slater, Christian Lees, and Louis Partridge, and of course Thomas Brody Sanksker, and Tallulah Riley of Vivian Westfield. She's an important character in it as well. You know, there are some, and these kids weren't even, you know, these are kids. These, these guys are all in their twenties, except for uh, Brody Sanksker, who's, thir who's thirty now. Though he looks still like like he's fifteen. He's the same age as McLaren was at the time, so it's quite interesting. Because he was like you know nearly ten years older than the pistols themselves, so there was almost a generation clash there. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting thing. And if you're a big fan of the pistols, there'll be things that you enjoy and the things that you will be irritated by at the same time. Does it give you the true story of the pistols, like like the Queen biopic? No, but you will enjoy some of it. It is enjoyable. It's also a little bit irritating too, you know. And the music's good. They get them to play. They seem to be playing the instruments. They seem to be recreating it live. You know, they seem to be. I was watching. They appear to be playing their instruments, which is really cool, you know. And there's that kind of earthiness to it. But some of the um, editorial decisions, some of the stylistic decisions in it, you know, I got real issues with it's the 70s you know just keep it keep the story just it's a story you don't need to do the stylistic stuff <laughs> uh, my only again another complaint is there was no uh, actor playing uh, Simon Jeffs who orchestrated the strings on my way which was covered by Sid Vicious for the the great rock and roll swindle. Remember, folks, everything is connected. Simon Jeffs, Penguin Cafe Orchestra. See, everything's connected. Um, yeah, so that's that. So yeah, do give it, do give it a watch, and uh, yeah, see if you're equally enthralled and irritated as I was. And if um, John Lyons watching, doubtful, give it a go. You know, you'll be surprised. They, they, they show you in a good, honest light, and um, and that's that. Thank you for watching. Uh, this has been my Jubilee celebration. God bless the Queen and all that may sail in her. And thank you for watching. If you like this video, great. If you don't, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. And uh, I'll say what I've been saying for many, many years. Yeah, there's only one left thing left to say. By now you know what that is. That is, ta-da. Oi, oi.